Hi guys, today we're going to be looking at Unit 1, Skill 2. This is Miss Griffin again. I promise you're going to hear Miss Wesley's voice soon. It might be a little nicer than mine. Um, we're going to be looking at hexagons and equilateral triangles inscribed in a circle. So our goal for the end of class today, or by the end of this video, is to be able to construct a regular hexagon and an equilateral triangle inscribed in a circle. Now inscribed means that we are drawing a shape so that the edges of the shape, the vertices, touch the edge of the circle. So we're going to just describe this or uh, define this over here off to the side. So it's a shape drawn inside of another shape with the points on the edge of the second shape. So in example one, you'll notice that it says to construct a regular hexagon. So we'll break that apart kind of like what we did in um, the first video that you saw, skill one yesterday or um, earlier today, depending on when you watched it. Regular means that a shape has all congruent sides and all congruent angles. So we'll define that over here. Say hi to Betsy. Oh, that's very nice of you. Goodbye. Okay, so again, regular means it's a shape with congruent sides and congruent angles. Oh boy, I just got into symbol town here. We've got the congruent symbol equals with a tilde, the little squiggle. Congruent sides and congruent, again, equal sign, little squiggle squiggle and then this symbol again means angles if you don't know these symbols yet write the word put the symbol in parentheses congruent sides congruent angles Betsy goodbye okay and then we see the word hexagon up here a hexagon is a shape with six sides Alright, so I'm just going to highlight those vocab words so they stand out to me. Remember, you want to equip yourself when you're doing these notes with highlighters or colored pencils, something to help you make some important piece of information stand out to you. So if we take those two words, regular and hexagon, and put them together, that means that we have a six-sided figure with congruent sides and angles. I'm going to condense that by saying six congruent sides and angles. So it needs to be inscribed in a circle, which means that we have to first make a circle. When you are asked to make a circle, remember we did this on um, the first or second day of school, you have to start with a center point. Doesn't matter what you call it, I'm going to choose to call mine C, C for center. And then I'm going to choose some radius doesn't matter how big, but you don't want to make it too big because it does have to fit in this space. So you can just kind of move your radius and adjust it as need be. I'm using mine at about two centimeters. You know, the small numbers, two centimeters. And I'm just going to swing it all the way around. Remember, if your hands get awkward and twisted, you can turn your paper um, however you are comfortable with it. Um, make it easy for yourself. So it says, step one was to draw a circle with the compass and label the center. Then it says, without changing your compass, meaning don't move the center, or don't move the radius, put the point of your compass anywhere on the circle and swing the compass to make a baby arc on the circumference of the circle. Okay, let's break that down. We need a point on our circle. I'll say P. P for point. I'm going to put my center on that point. 
and I'm going to swing a baby arc, meaning a small, tiny, little arc. Unlike what we did yesterday, those were big smiley arcs, swing above, swing below. This is just a little baby arc on the edge or the circumference of the circle. And so from there, we have an intersection point. From that intersection point, I'm going to pick my compass up. I'm going to put it on that intersection point and swing another baby arc. And I'm going to continue doing this all the way around my circle. Center on the intersection, swing the arc, put the point. Center on the intersection, swing a baby arc, put the point. Because we're making a hexagon, it should have six sides, six angles. That means we need six arcs. With the last one, going through point P. Six sides, six arcs, six angles. So we did the repeat step two until you've gone all the way around the circle. And step four says connect each point to the adjacent point using a straight edge. Adjacent means next to. If you need to define that off to the side, write it. Next to. So connect each point to the one next to it using the straight edge. Now, personally, I like to highlight the shape that I was supposed to make, so I'm going to just outline this hexagon, my regular hexagon, in some colors, or a color. Alright, so we just successfully inscribed a regular hexagon in a circle. Now, example two came straight from a, a Common Core exam. It says, use a compass and a straight edge, construct a regular hexagon inscribed in circle T. Now, the difference here is that they gave a circle with a center, unlike in example one. That means you get to skip step one, sort of, um, but you need to know what the length of the radius is from the center to the outside anywhere before you start making arcs. Because if you just choose whatever radius you want to make the arcs, then you could end up with just four arcs around the circle or... 10 arcs around the circle, depending on how large or how small you made your radius. So I'm going to write myself a note. When the circle is given, we must measure the length. of the radius with our compass, of the radius with our compass. And I'm going to show you how to do that, don't worry. So just like we had a point P here, I'm going to put a point P somewhere in my circle. It doesn't have to be at the bottom for whatever reason, that's just where I always go. So what we want to measure is this length here, but we don't get to use the ruler part. We have to use the compass part, meaning put your center on T and put your radius on P and close your little knob up. Center on T, radius on P, close it up. You're not swinging any arcs right now. You're just measuring the length of that radius. I'm just writing measure first. Okay, so from here I have point P, and now the process is the same. Swing a baby arc, plot a point. Swing a baby arc, plot a point. Swing a baby arc, so on and so forth, until you get all the way back to P.
Now, some of you, you might have your last and final arc being off just a little bit. Um, not a huge deal. There is some room for human error here. Um, but if it's off quite significantly, like say your last arc is way over here, then that indicates that you've definitely done something wrong. Um, so you'd want to go back, remeasure your radius, erase all your arcs, and start over again. Hopefully you're doing this in pencil. That way if you make a mistake, then you can easily go back and just erase. So from here, I'm just going to connect each of those points to uh, end up with the regular hexagon. Notice that I'm connecting the points on the edge of the circle. I'm not connecting these points here at the end of the arcs. It's what's at the edge of the circle that we're connecting. And again, I like to just highlight it in a color so it stands out to me. You can go ahead and read the question at the bottom and try to answer that on your own. It says each side of the hexagon is the same length, so it's called a regular hexagon. How do you know this is based true based on the marks that you made with your, your compass. So the marks being those arc marks. How would we know that each piece, each side of this hexagon is the same as the other based on those arc marks that we made? Think about what you did with your radius. Did you change it at all throughout this construction? Hopefully your answer is no, because if you did, then you didn't follow the steps. So the reason that we would know that each of these segments or sides of the hexagon are the same is because we kept the same radius throughout the construction. Creating congruent lengths. Once you have that, flip it over and we will talk about example three, our last and final example. This one, again, is a common core exam question. This time it says to uh, use a compass and a straight edge to construct an equilateral triangle inscribed in circle T. So let's define equilateral triangle. You've known this. You've known your shapes um, since, uh, I don't know, second or third grade. Equilateral triangle is a triangle with three congruent sides. So this time again we are given the circle with center T. So just as with the hexagon, we need to measure the radius. So I'm going to put a point somewhere on the edge of my circle. I'm going to choose to call it P. And I'm going to measure that radius. Don't assume it's the same as the last time. I have no idea. I don't know if I made the circle bigger, smaller, or kept it the same. So just remeasure it. Center on T, radius on P. From there, you are going to construct a regular hexagon inscribed in a circle but I don't want you to connect every point. And we'll see that in step two. So start making your arcs all the way around. Remember that we should end up with six arcs around the circle.
you can see that this time, if you were watching the video, um, I did all of my arcs first and then put my intersection points in after. Um, it's your choice whether you put them in first or second. It doesn't matter. Sometimes it's helpful for students to line the little crosshairs of the compass. I'm not sure if you can see them. Those little cross sections of the compass up with the actual point. Um, other times you may not need to see it, but you do need to have the points there in the end for sure. So now step two says instead of connecting each point to the adjacent points, connect one point to alternating points to connect a three-sided figure. So if I start at point P, I don't want to go to either one right next to it. I want to go every other. So skip one, connect. And then from here, I'm going to skip one and then connect. And from there, skip one, connect, and I hit P. Now, you could have also done the other three points. It wouldn't have mattered. You still would have gotten full credit. This was a two-point construction question on one of those Common Core exams. You'll notice that we embed the Common Core exam questions into our notes, into our practice, CFUs, and tests. So be prepared for them. Um, we are obviously trying to teach you at the level of rigor that you will find on your June Common Core exam. That's all for now. Don't forget, at some point later in time, you